Awesome. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to our first Eastertide Lunch and Learn. My name is Jason Evans, and I'm the missioner for missional communities here at the diocese. Stephanie, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Stephanie Towns, and I'm also a missioner. I'm a missioner for congregational vitality for the diocese. He and I work on the mission amplification team, the team that works with congregations of the diocese. Absolutely. And now that our congregations have been gathering online for over a month now and Easter Sunday is behind us, we thought it would be a good idea to look back and reflect on our practices so far and what might be next. Uh, we will make sure to put notes and links from this conversation at epicenter.org slash, slash uh, virtual dash church epicenter.org slash virtual dash church I think I got that right and uh, so. but we thought we should probably start with prayer so Stephanie you want to lead us in prayer yes if you'll share your screen Jason absolutely all right the collect for today the Lord be with you. And also with you. And also with you. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and Im immortality to light, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. 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 We're reading from Acts. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And I picked the scripture because it feels kind of like the space that we're in where we've gotten through a few weeks of virtual worship and we're kind of sitting here just like the, the disciples were. Um, what are our next steps? We aren't just looking up to heaven. We're um, looking to our next steps. So um, with that, um, and my cat is trying to get on the screen. Uh, <laughs> well, we should probably make sure I, and I, I it escaped. It escaped me to make sure we also introduced somebody else that's joining us on screen. Ellie, would you introduce yourself to everybody? Oh, you're muted, Ellie. That's off brand. I'm the social media specialist. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm the social media specialist um, and I do multimedia as well. And so. we're grateful that you uh, helped us set this up today. Before we, we get kind of into reflecting on a few things uh, with everybody, why don't we start with some things that we're celebrating? Because a lot has happened in the last few weeks, and there were at least a few things we thought it would be important to just stop and say, yay for these things. You want to kick us off, Stephanie? Sure. I was talking to Holy the Reverend Cindy Clark at uh, Holy Innocence in Madisonville, and she was telling me that her... Um, average attendance on Zoom has been double what it is in person. And she's just so excited that, to see that her people are inviting people into their space. And it's really been a beautiful holy space for them. So that was really exciting to hear from her. And those of us on the Mission AM team, we've heard that from across the diocese, so many stories about folks being able to pivot quickly and discovering new life in, in new ways they may have never anticipated uh, through streaming worship, et cetera. But one of the things that's been really cool for me to see and I wanna just celebrate is how our congregations have responded to need in their surrounding community. There's a few congregations that come to mind. I know a lot have been doing this, whether it's feeding people or running blood drives, uh, but San Pedro and Pasadena 
uh, Grace Alv and Alvin, and then also uh, Saint Isidore and Spring have just done an incredible job of making sure that for those people that are food insecure, that they can provide for them safely um, food for them to in this this crazy time when people are losing their jobs and such. So some celebration, even in the cra craziness of what's going on right now, some things that we certainly want to lift up and, and thank God for. So Stephanie, why don't you explain a little bit more about what's next? What are we hoping to do in these brief lunch and learns? So we are hoping to since we've got done, what, five weeks of virtual worship, we're, and we still have a few weeks to go at the very least, um, we're looking to pause first and take a look back and see what we've done and then look forward and what can, how can we do this well? How can we continue to like, like these communities that Jason just lifted up, San Pedro, um, Grace Alvin and St. Isidore and others that are reaching out to their community despite being social distant and, and how can we um, welcome the people that are that are in our, our virtual spaces? How can we do that well? How can, how can we just do this well as best as we possibly can with the time that we're given? So we're hoping that we'll try something new. We're trying these Facebook Lives that we've never done before um, and, uh, and see how it goes. And we'll be monitoring Facebook Live um, for comments. If you have questions, um, jump in and we'll, we're taking a look at those and we'll, we'll try to answer them. But we have some questions we're, we're thinking through um, to help y'all think through. So, um, so Jason, um, so we're we're thinking back first. Um, so we're we're thinking through questions like, um, what are we learning about our new practices? Um, some of them have been learning, uh, like uh, Holy Innocence, that this has been a really beautiful time. Um, that people are um, inviting people in, and that 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 bar to invite people has has lowered, and that's really beautiful. Um, so think about things like what have we noticed since we've been on online um, and increasing our online presence? What are we wondering about? What are our people wondering about? What are our leaders wondering about? And um, like Jason and I just named, what are things we can celebrate? I know each of our communities, even in this trying time, have things to celebrate. I hear that over and over, and it's been really lovely that you've shared your stories with us. But also still, what can we do better? Um, there's still technical glitches to work through, which is understandable. I'm sure there's technical mm -hmm. glitches on this, like my cat showing up. Um, You're not alone. My dog just walked into the room. So <laughs> I, I have no idea what sounds might emerge. <laughs> Um, so those uh, are joys and, uh, and things to try to do better. Um, and then just thinking what does success look like in this time? Um, is it, it's going to look different than when we, uh, when we worship in person, but thinking through yeah. what is that success? What do we want to accomplish? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jason? Well, I think another important question is for us to think about what tools we can use to help us make those assessments. What are the things that we are seeing going well that we're celebrating that maybe we want to uh, capitalize on those things, increase, maximize what those things are. There are, are things that we may find we want to minimize and do less of. And there may be some things that as we look back, we're going to be saying, those need to be eliminated altogether. We don't need to continue to do those types of things. And one of the things that's important to look at, especially as we're all doing worship and prayer online these days, is looking at some of the metrics that are available to you. So everybody's probably very familiar with the fact that you can look at how many views you've had to your live streaming or pre-recorded worship services and prayer services, but you also can look at engagement and those are different. So a lot of people can just drop in and, and watch whatever it is that you're sharing, whether that be on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook Live, but you also can look online at those services that you're using and, to, and find out um, how people are engaging. So what are people responding to? Those can be the like buttons, the heart buttons, the emojis, different comments. Hopefully during your homilies, people aren't sharing recipes with each other, but that'll show up as engagement too. Like to see how, where the peak of engagement during a service is. That would be really helpful to go back, look at, so you can determine what are people responding to? What are they engaging in? Not just consuming as, visu as a visual, but are, what are they actually uh, responding to during worship? And 
how are we translating you know what we're what we're doing um for for moving forward what do we need to uh, shift in 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 going forward because of what we're able to determine from our metrics about what matter uh, what matters moving forward um there's the one of the likely things that I think we've been thinking about too, as we've watched uh, services, is that there are some things that don't necessarily translate into a virtual space the way they do in uh, the in-person worship. So thinking about things that are worth replicating in worship, but also looking at things that maybe we don't want to replicate because they don't translate the same. Um, if you look at the, the webpage that I mentioned earlier, you'll see a lot of the communication team's recommendations for, for how we want to uh, communicate with people virtually uh, in worship. And some things work and some don't. And every context is a little bit different. But taking a look at your, your metrics a little bit deeper than just how many views you have would probably be something uh, helpful for you and the other leaders of your community to re reflect on. What else do you think we might be reflecting on during this time, Stephanie? Well, on that note, there are things that we can do in an online service that you can't do. I mean, in your normal, uh, we don't want people talking in our sermons normally when we're preaching. That would be considered rude. But uh, I've seen some really lovely services where the, the priest, the celebrant has ask the community to to engage in the chat and that's been really lovely to do things like naming grief mm -hmm. um uh, to to br come together to pray together um to to list, lift prayers up in in our time of prayers of the people to put your prayers in the in the chat box and that's been really good and beautiful and holy holy spaces mm -hmm. um and in that name like naming grief that is uh, that is a need that we keep hearing that our communities have. There's a lot of grief, everything from proms being canceled to people to people dying and um, and having to do last rites on um, FaceTime. Um, so uh, thinking about what the real needs of our community are, I mean, we we do want um, fellowship and community, but but what are the and each community is going to be different. Some have real felt needs where people are losing jobs. Some have um, some aren't and are looking for for ways to to um, connect and help their communities. And they're all different, but um, but thinking through what are the short term, medium term, and long term uh, strategies to, to meet those needs. I mean, we don't, we don't know how long we'll be doing this and it might be different in different communities as different counties have different, uh, stay at home plans. Right. Um, yeah. but thinking through that in your particular context can be really helpful. Yeah. And then help naming those practice, having practices and where you have space to name your grief and your community's grief that um, maybe that's in maybe a smaller space, like a, a virtual uh, Bible study on Zoom, or maybe it's in a larger space like uh, Facebook Live, but having having those and processing your own grief, because we the last thing we want to do as leaders is to um to not work through our own emotions in these difficult times. Yeah. Do you have other thoughts, Jason? I just think that that's, this is the time to be doing that work. I think for so many folks in the diocese, um, they've been doing actually some of that work really well, but for the, when this all started happening, we were right in the middle of Lent and then getting ready for Easter and Easter in a brand new and different way for everybody. And so now is really the time for us to be stepping back and asking a lot of these questions that, uh, what, what's next? What do we need to be thinking about? Like you said, Stephanie, in the short term and in the long term and in between there in the medium time, uh, what, what do we need to be getting done and this is this is the time to be doing that to be thinking about uh what are the needs in our community now that we've gotten over that threshold of easter um it's an opportunity for us to begin to look out look at the community that's gathering and their 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 needs um the the, the congregation itself but also beyond in the surrounding community what's going on and what might your congregation need to begin to think about in responding to uh, the need around you, the, the, the hopes and the hurts of the community around you. So for this week, I think that's about all that we have to, to offer. Um, we're gonna continue to do this on Facebook Live each Tuesday at noon through Eastertide. 
Um, there are a few things before we go away that we want to share with you. The first is that uh, there is a great tool for you to be using um, uh, the, throughout Easter tide that the cathedral has put together. It's a Bible study series on Acts. You've taken a, probably a, a deeper look at it, Stephanie, than I've had a chance. I just got a chance to start reading through it this morning. I'm really excited about this. Is there anything that you want to mention about the study? Um, it's done, it's shareable, it's free, um, and it's a resource that the cathedral has provided um, that um, the Reverend Becky Sartman, who's awesome, has cre helped create. And, Way to go, um, Becky. Yeah, and uh, we... Uh, it, and I really think it's a time, it's a wonderful time to look through acts. I think that mm -hmm. their, their time uh, speaks to our time very, very well. They were scared those, that those first Easter, um, yes. first Easter tide. So I think that it really, really speaks to our time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have any questions from the chat, um, we'll just have something to add. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me because somebody's doing landscaping outside my apartment, <laughs> such as Zoom. Um, but so a large part of my job has been doing a lot of tech support for congregations um, just across the diocese. And I want to acknowledge how much legwork it's taken for folks to adopt so much technology so quickly. I mean, yes. like we, we grew years technologically in like weeks. Um, Amazing it's incredible Amazing. I mean it's yeah um it is spirit driven in a lot of ways and I think it's also important as we sort of crest over into Easter um to rest and give yourself a Sabbath at this sort of um intersection and and really do some contemplation and think about think about these questions but also take take the opportunity to get some rest because we have accomplished so much. Yes. Yes. For sure. Good For sure. word. Yeah. It's it's it can't it can't be stated enough how impressive it has been to watch congregations of all sizes across the diocese respond so quickly. And your team, Ellie, has been amazing in helping folks uh, work over hiccups and such uh, mm -hmm. in doing that. But it has been really impressive. Um, so we're hoping that folks will bring their questions next time uh, that we do this on Tuesday next week about what you're learning um, and about what questions you have about what's next. But after you take a nap as Ellen has right. wisely advised, <laughs> right? <laughs> so just a few thoughts to close us. Um, remember in everything that we do, follow the CDC guidelines, um, follow your bishop's directions, and uh, when in doubt, do no harm to your community. Um, while you're, we are all attempting to do good, but keep those reminders. And as we said, the notes, um, the notes and links from this conversation will be at epicenter.org slash virtual dash church, which is a word, uh, word, um, word salad. All right. We do have a question. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's get it in. We've got time. All right. Reflecting on many aspects of our now simplified self quarantine ways to stay in touch, how to give back or pay forward to others in my community, how to learn coping skills via prayer, meditation, or yoga, or how to sample menus, and food prep, and sharing. And this is from Susan, it Susan. looks like. Thank you, Susan. These are all good uh, subject matter. Hopefully, these are things that uh, you're reflecting on, and we'll certainly uh, make sure that we're sharing any resources along this line in future mm -hmm. conversations. Um, Ellie, Stephanie, got any other thoughts on Susan's comment? I do think we will be covering the how to give back and pay forward to others in the community and some later um, Facebook lives. We have some scheduled ones where we would do that. Um, coping skills via prayer and meditation is, um, I think, super important. As I reflect on formation um, during this time, our brains are not built to learn anything when we're as stressed and anxious as we are. Mm -hmm. So I think when we um, take time, like Ellie said, to rest um, and um, spend time in quiet contemplation, or maybe it's getting a walk in nature or what have you um, to get our brains back to where they can actually function. I know my brain is exhausted by the end of the day. 
Mm-hmm. I think anytime we can do that and help our communities do that, I think that that's healthy um, and will help us to be um, in spaces where we can be transformed in the image of Christ um, during this time. So yeah, I think that's it's, a really good point. It's also important to remember that, you know, during this, this type of an, a moment um, where the crisis is now becoming a little bit more normalized, but for many of us, we can uh, overfunction. We want to do more, mm-hmm. but then there are others of us that want to do less. And we really do, uh, we do kind of shrink um, back and we need to find a happy medium, but all the, at the same time, it's important to point out that our giving back, our paying it forward right now is self-isolating, is practicing social distancing, of being safe. That is how we're giving back by, by making the, the demands upon our healthcare system as little as possible so that our healthcare system can respond to those people that really need the help. We are giving back by, by abiding by what the bishop has told us to do and by the CDC's guidelines. Um, so you are contributing Um, no matter if it feels like you're just sitting at home and binge watching something on Netflix, you're helping the cause right now. Um, As strange as that is, who would have ever thought we would say that Mm -hmm. right now? Yeah. So as, uh, as I think uh, Stephanie, you were saying, as uh, you were closing up before we got that last question, um, the notes and links for this conversation, we'll make those available at epicenter.org slash virtual dash church, epicenter.org slash virtual church. So you can go check out anything we've discussed uh, today and in future conversations there. Any other closing words from you all? Next week, uh, the topic is going to be virtual evangelism and hospitality. Um, so That's gonna be fun. It's yeah, yeah it's gonna be fun and i've it's seen not the some... same as in person <laughs> no it's not and i've seen some really good job some people doing a really good job of that so i am looking forward to celebrating those places that are doing well so absolutely good seeing you all good seeing you too thanks for Thank hosting you, ellie see. we'll see talk to you later. soon see you next week bye